Hey, how many lights you think that thing has? 1,200? No! Yeah. Huh. Hey, how tall you think that thing is? 12 feet? About 4 meters? No! Yeah? Huh. Hey, how far apart you think those lights are? Three inches, or about seven and a half centimeters? No! Yep. Huh. Hey, you think I could buy one of those already put together? No! Hi, welcome to Kenna Spader Christmas. All right, we got a new year, we got a new decade, and we've got a bunch of folks that are just beginning their journey toward the animated LED lighting hobby. And so welcome aboard to all of you that are just starting out. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Hope your, uh, your holiday season was wonderful. Um, I had just, uh, this, this past weekend, I took the display down. So normally I schedule it for the first weekend in the year and Kathy wanted to leave it up another week. So I said, all right, no problem. I checked the weather to make sure we weren't going to have, uh, bad storms. And, um, when I checked it, it wasn't going to be a bad storm, but Friday before the Saturday I had planned to you know, take everything down, we were supposed to have tornadoes in the area, which we don't usually have that kind of weather in January, but it was unseasonably warm. So uh, it was feeding all of that. And anyway, we were fine. We, we I, don't, I don't even think we got much wind. Um, the, the activity was kind of north and east of us. But anyway, uh, display came down last weekend, but I wanted to give you a pro tip uh, for, well, for next year. So, you know, you run your last show of the season, uh, and this is really best to do, you know, when it's dark out. Um, daytime is going to be a little harder to see this, but if you just put your controller into like a white ramp mode, Go look at all your pixels and make sure all of them are lighting properly. If you have any that aren't, tag them some way. I use, I use this, it's just paper tape or painter's tape that I get from my local home improvement warehouse. Um, wrap that around the pixel and then, you know, when I start taking things down, I'll see that and go, oh yeah, I need to replace that. So the just, an idea. Of course, if you have RGBW lights, maybe create a sequence that goes through all the different colors. It may take you a little longer to go through that, but uh, you know, depending on what you have, if you know, if you don't have RGBW lights, just do a white ramp, and that will that will tell you. Um, if you have RGBW lights, then you'll probably need to create a sequence going through red, green, blue, white, and checking all the bulbs for that. Uh, all right, for this episode I want to talk about my Mega tree. <laughs> yeah I got a few questions about the uh, mega tree the the stats on it and everything so I thought I would do a quick video of that and and you know answer all those questions I actually told somebody I would do that last year and I forgot to do it so here it is for those of you uh, that are interested uh let's see here so we'll start with the pole the pole is an a sap pole or a strap and pole uh walter monk house came up with the initial design it's been copied and modified a few times if you go out to magicchristmas.org uh, walter has a website and it talks about uh everything you need basically an asap pole is a pole inside a pole or two poles uh, and then you have a third pole that pushes up on 
something that extends the inside pole and you just use a uh, strap with a, a it's a use it, a boat boat uh, I don't have one so I don't know what it's called boat trailer or trailer anyway it's a little crank thing and it's got a strap on it and it pulls up on a pole that pole pushes up on your tree topper and so the pole in the center is held by the outer pole and it just goes up like that that's how you extend that um, mine let's see mine goes up about 12 feet or four meters roughly so that's the pole so go out to that website figure out how to make your pole and make your pole I don't have time to make you one so not happen the base for the pole Walter calls it a portable hole it's basically a box that you make out of two by fours and then you pour concrete in it uh, and you have the um, well the bottom that the pole screws into put that in there before you put the concrete in there or it'll be a lot harder to deal with later um, <laughs> But he has, uh, he has full diagrams and takes you kind of step by step through how to make it. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, depending on how you anchor it down, um, if you want to just make longer boards, uh, that, that will stabilize it a little better. Um, the original design was to use, uh, when you pour the concrete, put little um, eyelets in there and let them harden in there with the concrete and then use turnbuckles and some anchors. So that would keep it uh, steady and keep it from toppling over. There are other designs out there if you wanna take a look at those. For my setup, I have two four by fours crisscrossed. Uh, I've been using that for years. Now the downside is that doesn't really provide any stability for the tree. I mean, it provides enough when I'm setting it up, but that is not how I anchor it. Uh, you know, any wind would just blow that thing right over. So I'll talk about how I anchor it uh, in just a minute. This is my current topper. I just put um, a coupler here for where the you know the pole comes comes up like this and holds onto it there. Um, and then it's a quarter inch thick piece of steel that I got off of eBay. Uh, I drilled some holes in it to just put quarter inch bolts, and that's what I just hang the uh, pixel strings onto. Now the reason this is off and in here is I need to put another one of these on this side because I'm going to be adding a star next year. It'll be a four foot star, um, and so that's why I'm going to have changed my anchoring system get to that in just a minute if you can't build your own tree topper uh, you know for whatever reason there are a few places you can buy them I know Biscoyo sells some um, I don't know if those are metal or not uh, I know JR has some I'll include links in the description of the video I'll also include a link to Amazon for this these are very handy I use them everywhere now to hold the pixels straight I have this strip from Biscoyo this is the older stuff it's a little bit thinner um, they also you can you could buy these separately the uh, little strain reliefs and you basically just tie wrap them find your little hole there tie wrap them and uh, this will you know give a little added strength to the end with the new strip it's a little thicker a little bit stronger so I don't know if you still need that um, oh, the other thing was, so this is, these are three inches apart, uh, and these are an inch apart, so I'm going every third one. Three inches is how far apart I put my pixels. Um, if you like denser trees, you could go maybe two inches or even one inch. I think one would be kind of a bit of overkill, but you know, some people like that, so that's fine with me. Um, they do look, you know, patterns will look nicer, graphics will look better on a denser tree so um, you know just kind of have to experiment I started out with 800 pixels on the tree I now have 1200 pixels uh, I may add more at some point in the future I don't know you also need pixels themselves um, I believe I use bullet pixels for all of mine 
um, and really just because they didn't have flat pixels when I start started the tree and uh, you know the bullet pixels work just fine so that's what I have on the tree now um, you probably use either one doesn't really matter ball bungee so it's a bungee cord and with this little ball on the end so the way you use this the way you use these uh, you just have the end of the strip there you just stick this through the hole and then you wrap it around whatever you're going to wrap it around and there you have it it is uh you know it's stuck there pretty good now you you know if you crank on the crank too much this this will pop off but uh i mean it's pretty strong it it will hold them pretty well well if i can get that back on there i mean that's pulling as hard as i can so um you know it does pretty good the way i use these is uh i have a ring on the bottom that is made out of pvc i took three 10 inch pieces of i think it was three quarter inch pvc and just kind of bent it into a circle uh it's about eight feet in diameter i may have trimmed some off to get it down you know i don't know uh start with start with 30 feet and and cut some off if you know if that's too wide or add another one if it's not wide enough for you it depends on what kind of tree you like um but then i will you know the strips come down i got the ring on the bottom uh, i put these around the pvc and they hold you know the strips to the ring and then i anchor the ring down with uh tent stakes and so i'll go you know one way uh, on one side and then the other way on the other side it holds it down pretty well and i have been happy with it the tree hasn't gone over well it did the one year that i forgot to actually stake the thing to the ground but uh, but normally it doesn't the tree doesn't blow over next year i'm adding a four foot star to the top of the tree so that's going to be a huge wind sail and um actually got some tips from uh, Ron Howard on his tree he has a large star on the top when he was talking about uh, kind of anchoring it down so uh, I will I'll go through that you know as when I get the star and, and actually start building it up next year but um, anyway that thing's going to be on top of there so there's going to be a lot more wind load and I will right now I'm planning to guy the tree I don't know if if I really need to do that or not but we'll see if I can think of another idea that will keep from having to do that then I may not but but currently that's the plan finally you will need uh, you know your electronics you'll need power supply uh, or more than one depending on how bright you're running the lights or uh, you know for mine I can run just one power supply I run it, the lights at 30 percent so I don't you know have all that current requirement so I can run all of that off of one power supply now when I add the star I may have to add another power supply I don't know I'll have to do my calculations and I'll go through all that when I actually put that together but uh, currently this year I ran one differential receiver, one power supply, and, and that was it. So I'm running four strings of 300. I'm injecting power at the end of each string and I'm folding them at 50. So we've got 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. So six strands per string four strings of 300 that makes 1200 pixels and I can do all that off of one differential receiver and one uh, power supply and then I have that in a plastic ammo case uh, but again that's probably gonna have to change next year because of the addition of the star and if I add more pixels I'm gonna have to change that anyway so that's the current build that I have for my <laughs> And I will keep you posted on the progress of that. Do you like the new green screen? 
Uh, if you have any questions about the tree or really anything else, go ahead and comment below. I will get to them. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Uh, so I got six of these and so they... I got five of these when I started relaxing a little bit and then BAM!